In this video, we'll prepare not one, but two DraftKings Week 1 lineups as we compete with DFS Hub founder Rob McLister in a head-to-head -head matchup. We'll reveal each of our methodologies to build winning NFL DFS lineups and unveil a new weekly NFL DFS contest. It is free to enter and has a prize pool of $175 every week. It's a great jam-packed show, and it's coming up next. Hello, everyone. I'm Eric Lee with the Fantasy Football Consultants, and I am glad to welcome to the show Rob McClister, founder of DFS Hub, a site which helps DFS enthusiasts understand and efficiently exploit NFL data to build better NFL DFS lineups. Rob, welcome to the show. Hey, it's great to be back, Eric. Where'd the offseason go? Yeah, <laughs> we are. I don't know, but we are really excited to start this season and have this dueling lineups and methodologies we're going to go over. But I just want to share with our FFC viewers, as our channel grows, we get more and more offers to be affiliates. Almost all that we reject. We are so proud to be an affiliate of DFS Hub. We truly believe in the tools uh, that are on your site. It helps you build better lineups and most importantly, saves you time in doing so. So tell our viewers, uh, Rob, a little bit more about DFS Hub. Well, first of all, thank you for that. Very kind. Um, you know, DFS Hub started because, you know, we got into, the, I got into DraftKings a long time ago, looking all over the internet for uh, sites that could let me see just the stats I wanted to see. And it was, there's nothing like customizable that had all the stats I wanted. So um, you know, I had a background in development, so I created my own. And so we have DFS Hub here. It's uh, it's officially launching this week, believe it or not, after four years of development. And it's been a rocky road, but we're here and we're in a good place now. And, uh, you know, the tool is designed to level the playing field between, you know, your casual user and your pro user who has all this data, all this news. You know, we got like 4,500 plus news sources for players and teams. We got like almost every stat you could imagine, uh, PFF player grades. We've got a lot of stuff. And the coolest part is that you can put it all on one page uh, and customize it any way you want. All right. Let's, can you show us that page that you're referring to? I can indeed. All right. I'm going to show you three tools here that are important. And we're going to get into our, our kind of lineup uh, showdown uh, after this. But uh, let's start with um, our the place I go every week. Uh, to start my research process. And that's the uh, fantasy football injury replacement table. And so, so what this is, is you see all of the key players uh, with their injuries and it shows you who the backups are. And so, um, you know, Cooper Cup, uh, for example, likely out this week. So it shows you the backups, Van Jefferson and Puka. Um, and once uh, the, the ownership data is out, which is uh, going to happen a few days before uh, each game, uh, then you'll see the ownership here as well, uh, if you are a member, and um, you see the salary and all that good stuff. Now, if you want to click on a player, you double click, then you can see a quick overview of the player with news and scouting report, his teammates. I really like this particular tool with injuries because as we say a lot on this channel, you know, the, they set the salaries this time weeks in advance, but normally, you know, a, about five to six days be before the game and they won't change it. And it's knowing the, the news that happens after those salaries are set, most notably injuries, which really separates the casual uh, DFS player from someone who's more successful. And so let's go back to the lineup builder now. Uh, this is where the magic happens. This is kind of the main tool in the site. So the whole point of this thing is to show you all the players, let you choose the, the columns that you want. And there's a whole bunch of them. You can order them any way you want. Uh, everything customizable. You can do, you know, quick fields here if you want to find out, you know, if you have metrics that are most uh, of interest to you for the player and they change every time you click on a new player. You got all the news here in the bottom right. Uh, you got uh, our scouting reports, which is kind of a summary of all the news. And um, you can, if you like a player, you can lock them in just by clicking the lock. 
Uh, you can fill out your whole lineup and uh, members can export the lineup to DraftKings or FanDuel. Uh, and that's in a nutshell how it works. There's obviously a lot more to it. Um, but Rob, with Rob, I really like all your columns. This is going to scare our viewers. But how many columns of different data do you think that you ha you have? You know, I think you'd think that I would have counted them by now, but there's hundreds. Um, so there's there's lots. Yeah, and you were kind enough to reach out to us to get our opinion about what the metrics that we think are most valuable. Every metric for each position that we think is more valuable, DFS Hub has included in their items. So what's great is you can comb through there and pick the metrics you think is most important for you to know. And it makes more, it makes, it saves so much time in building lineups. Yeah. You know, we get our best ideas from our users. So people come to us all the time. Hey, can you add this or that? And uh, we always try to do it for, uh, for people who are members. So I'm going to show you the weekly contest. This is new for this year. Okay. Um, so this is, you basically create a lineup uh, and then you click, you know, one button and you can enter the contest. It's as easy as that. It puts you in the free contest every week. Um, you know, there's $175 in prizes, 100 for first, no strings attached, no fee, no nothing. Uh, free users can play. And uh, this is going to be fun, I think. You know, we'll be able to kind of go head to head uh, and, uh, and see how we do throughout the season. This is so cool. And I am calling out to all our FFC uh, viewers. Let's take down these contests against anyone else that is part of DFS Hub. So, um, you know, it's so easy. You, you 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 sign up. DFS Hub has a free and a paid version. But even in the free version, you can participate in these weekly contests. And we're going to follow the weekly contests on our FFC channel. We'll shout out uh, the winners uh, uh, each week. That's awesome. And, uh, you know, we're probably going to have uh, a lot of users eventually for the contest but you know we haven't uh rolled out a big marketing campaign so your odds of winning in week one are as good as they will ever be rob can you talk a little bit more about like how people can sign up for dfs hub and maybe comment a little bit about the free version versus uh, a paid version absolutely so um if you go to join now you can see what's in the free version uh always going to be free um, and you can see what's in the pro version. And so if you're pretty serious about DFS, then uh, the pro version is pretty low investment, seven, uh, seven and a half bucks a week um, and gets you news without delay. You get the pro football focus team grades, a bunch more uh, specialized stats. You get the near real time prop lines, uh, ownership, um, player wires and a uh, whole bunch of other stuff. Yeah, so... And if you would like to support our channel, the Fantasy Football Consultants, please use our affiliate e link. That is, we'll put it on the screen, dfshub.com backslash FFC. And let's not forget that just by signing up for DFS Hub, even if you do the free version, you are eligible to participate in these weekly DraftKings contests. So you build your lineup on DFS Hub using all these tools. And then I believe it's just a one button click and enters that lineup into uh, the contest. And uh, I, I think like we said, a hundred dollars for first 50 for second and 25 for third. That's right. And so, you know, um, if you want free practice, I, I always recommend people actually uh, practice. If, if you're just coming into DFS, especially, you know, practice for a month or, or two, don't just jump in. Um, and, you know, this gives you ability to practice with like actually an upside uh, cash prizes. And so, you, you know, you'll see your uh, lineup here every week and you'll see how it ranks against everyone else below you. And uh, this is the DraftKings main slate contest. Uh, so that's the... Uh, was it 13 gamer? Uh, yeah, 13 gamer this Sunday. So once you uh, do your, like, let's say you're doing your main slate lineup for DraftKings. I mean, it, it's like so easy just to click uh, the button. And, and there's, again, there's not a button here because uh, you're actually, you know what? I'll show you the button on another screen. There's the free contest button. Okay. And so you click it 
and then you get uh, put into the contest and it's that simple. And then, you know, if you want, you can even export that lineup and put it right in the DraftKings, you know, Millionaire Maker or, or what have you. So, Rob, um, let's suppose uh, that you enter the contest, uh, let's say on a Tuesday, and you learn, oh, Friday or Saturday, you follow our advice, which is watch the late breaking news, looks in your news wire and realize, hey, there's another value that I'd like to change my lineup. Is it easy to adjust your lineup uh, in the contest? Yeah, absolutely. So you go and you make your change and then you click free contest again and it'll tell you that you've replaced your lineup. When I think uh, NFL, DFS or fantasy in general, it's all about the land of opportunity. How much opportunity that a particular player would get compared to their salary. So how does opportunities come into play in a tangible way? What is the role that that person is going to play on their team in this upcoming game? That's where the late breaking news that Rob talked to you about that his site does really well on is so important because with an injury or a suspension, all of a sudden a guy, when they set the salary that had a small role now may have a bigger role. The other thing that, that controls opportunities is game script. Look at how you think that the game will work out and you should use the lines makers as an aid. For example, favorites, Quarterbacks, running backs, and tight ends perform a lot better as favorites because a game script that um, they're, of course, going to score more as a favorite. And for running backs, you know, they run the ball a lot more when they're ahead. I'm also looking at the implied total. <laughs> I don't think that this is, a, you know, a rocket science to understand this. The more a team scores, the more likely that the player on that team will score. So those are some of the things I look at in general opportunities. And of course, finally, I'm looking at the quality of the player versus the quality of the defense that they're facing. We're going to show now my week one DraftKings lineup. My quarterback is Sam Howell. I've been talking. So if I'm going to pay down, I really want to get a guy who has a good rushing element to his game and throw in the fact that I love the game script here for Sam Howell. He's a home favorite, 23 implied total against a very bad Arizona defense. Yeah, you have reached deep into the bargain bin here. He's tied with uh, Ritter and Mayfield for the lowest price uh, QB this week. So well done there in your value hunting. Uh, you know, one interesting thing I must say uh, is that we're doing some research in the offseason. Found that uh, the optimal lineups from last year uh, had quarterbacks an average salary of about six, uh, 6,100 bucks. So, yeah. And in our research, it seems to be that paying up for a quarterback, they don't return value as much as the top wide receivers are the top running backs. Yep. All right, let's move on to our running backs. I'll go with another value play here. Uh, Rashad white, man. Um, very excited to get him in this lineup. He uh, Leonard Fournette is gone. He's now the bell cow back on Tampa Bay. This is going to be a new Tampa Bay team. Tom Brady is gone. They were extremely pass heavy last year. I think that they're going to be more balanced with Baker Mayfield. And he faces a Minnesota team that isn't str a strong defensively. They brought in a uh, defensive coach, uh, Brian Flores but they didn't get him a whole lot of new defensive players to help out that defense. So I love the price here of $5,500 for Rashad Wright. Yeah. You know, I've heard uh, comments about backfield by committee uh, in Tampa Bay, but you know, he's projected to get 17 opportunities this week. So not a bad play. All right. By saving money with those two picks, I can create kind of a stars and scrubs lineup. And the first of our three stars is Austin Eckler. You know, as soon as I saw the slate of the games, the game I wanted to make sure I got good exposure to is that LA Charger Miami game. They're by far the highest over under. It's a small spread. So that means shootout scores on both sides. And Austin Eckler, especially on DraftKings with his huge role in the passing game, uh, I think uh, can be big this week. So I'll spend up the money at 8,400 to get him. 
Mr. Fantasy, he's like automatic uh, four plus targets every game. And And I want to talk about Tyreek Hill and Justin Jefferson. Look, with Cooper Cup having injury uh, concerns, there is no doubt about it that these are two of the three best wide receivers in fantasy as we look at the beginning of this year. Jamar Chase would be the the other. Justin Jefferson led all wide receivers in receptions, all wide receivers in yards last year. And Tyreek Hill is so explosive. And once again, exposure to that Miami and LA Charger game just on the other side with Tyreek Hill. So I was pretty excited to get those three guys, Eckler, Hill, and Justin Jefferson in my lineup. Well, you know, these guys are the bluest of the blue chippers. And, you know, there's not much you, you need to say about either. The only thing that I would say is that, you know, if we're, if we're doing a cash lineup, then, you know, these guys are unbelievable. Um, if uh, we're doing a GPP, they're going to be so heavily owned that, especially if you have two of them in a lineup, but I know that you'd like to do your cash lineups. And uh, so, you know, hey, man, they're yeah, going to rock it- out. Exactly. And then cash lineup, I'll probably want to have some uh, correlation with my quarterback and wide receiver back. So potentially a cash lineup probably would not have included Justin Jefferson and uh, maybe a throw to a, or Justin Herbert as my quarterback. But to your point, I got to think about being unique some other places because I think uh, a Herbert to Hill and running that back with Eckler would be an extremely popular GPP stack. But not concerned about that in cash uh, of how popular a particular player is. All right. So after having my fun, I got to eat my vegetables here and get some more savings after those three guys. And I'm excited to get 2-2 Atwell. I just said that I do not did not expect Cooper Cup to play. Now, 2-2 Atwell was wide receiver three on the Rams. So he was going to be in in three wide receiver sets. But with Cooper Cup out, I expect that he will be a starter. Look, um, he was their number two draft pick last year. Uh, He's a speedster, can catch and can catch passes, uh, can can get yards in bunches. Yeah, I mean, easy to hit three times value if he gets, you know, any type of yardage uh, or, or, you know, God forbid, a a touchdown. Um, They're plus five right now, I think they're in. So they're going to be potentially playing from behind. So, you know, he's definitely uh, right after Jefferson right now, most likely. So he's going to get some uh, some throws. Just a quick shout out that if turns out that Cooper Cup plays or you're just not as comfortable with Atwell, there are other DraftKings $3,000 guys that uh, we like. I like Jaden Reed and Green Bay as long as um, Romeo Dobbs is out. And uh, I also like uh, Marvin Mims in Denver as long as Jerry Judy, which I'm almost sure he will be out. So those uh, those are some intriguing picks at the exact same $3,000 price. So it's easy to, to swap them based on news. So I still need to get some value and it's going to be tied in Luke uh, Musgrave from the Green Bay Packers. L- look, the um, Musgrave has, won, even though he is a rookie this year, he won the starting tight end job. He's a very big target. He's just he's not going to be a guy that just only blocks. He'll go out uh, for passes, and I, he can be a major threat around the goal line. I mean, he's going to pay off in spades if he gets a, a touchdown pass. You know, Jordan Love, I, I think, is going to rely uh, on Musgrave uh, when he gets near the goal line because he's six foot six, this huge target and great catching ability. Of course, I really I like the Musgrave pick with Romeo Dobbs, but I really like it if Dobbs, uh, the wide receiver, is in fact out of this game. Yeah, I agree. I think Love's going to do a lot of uh, short passes here in his uh, big deb- debut. Uh, that leaves me in the flex. Uh, Ken Walker the uh, third. I was really concerned as a Seahawk fan. He was injured in the preseason, but the latest reports are he is good to go. Now. I want to be clear and honest with you guys. He's going to see some carries and the passing, a lot of passing game to Zach Charbonnet. But this guy is so good and dynamic. I mean, he he almost every time he, he touches the ball, he can run for a 50-yard touchdown. He is that fast and that elusive. Um, throwing the fact that I love the game script here, 
He is a uh, a home favorite, 25 and a half implied total. Um, like we talked about, five and a half point favorites should uh, play from ahead. That's all good news for Ken Walker. Yeah, you know, among the starters, he is the most explosive running back uh, as rated by PFF. They have this breakaway percent uh, stat uh, that we like to look at uh, for tiebreakers when we're comparing different players. Um, also has the lowest TD cost. Uh, and so we look at the, the prop line, you know, the prop line for uh, the odds of uh, a player scoring a touchdown. And then we compare it to his salary. And, uh, you know, among the, the big name starters, he's got a tremendous value there for, uh, for cost per touchdown. So the last position is our defense. Look, it's fantasy football consultants. We completely acknowledge that defense is extremely volatile and therefore hard to predict. We don't like paying up for a defense. We don't just automatically pick the, the, the weakest defense. We look at a bunch of key factors. Here, the, the Raiders are facing a Denver team who really struggled last year on offense. And now anybody who can catch a ball is hurt on Denver. Uh, KJ Hamler's out. Tim Patrick's out. Jerry Judy is likely out. So, um, you know, they're, they're, it's a relatively short uh, spread. I think that Denver's a four-point favorite. So as a, uh, a punt defense, I like it. Now, I got to tell you guys, if I had five hundred dollars more, I was sh I'm sh always shocked that Washington is twenty two thousand eight hundred dollars. So if you can spare the five hundred dollars, I have no problem with you picking Washington, especially in cash. I think that Washington is going to be really highly owned um, uh, for GPP. That's fantastic, Eric. Uh, I like your uh, I like your lineup here, Stars and Scrubs. Um, you did you just on? call? Did you just call some of my players Scrubs? I, I'm in the most respectful way possible. <laughs> and, uh, we'll start uh, with the quarterback, uh, Mr. Lawrence. So, um, you know, he is uh, what third year now, and there's always a maturing process that happens in uh, the second and third year. I think this guy is ready for prime time. Serious uh, wide receiver weapons this year. Um, we got Ridley among them. Um, and, you know, facing a, a mostly unproven secondary in Indy. He has continued to progress each year in becoming a better and better quarterback. You can just see with his poise and, uh, in, the, in the pocket. Um, number two, running back. Uh, Najee Harris, a little bit of a contrary in play, but uh, you know we're playing in GPP. Um, you know he's facing uh, uh, unbelievable defense um, versus San Francisco. The guy, though, you know, uh, twenty touches uh, a game in the first two seasons on average. He's their go-to guy. Um, you know, I think he's going to get dumped off a lot by Pickett uh, with the pressure from San Fran. So he's my uh, he's my guy. Cool. And so uh, we've got some overlap here. Kenneth Walker at running back. Um, love that pick of yours. Uh, like I said, lowest uh, TD cost of uh, any starter at home. Unbelievably explosive. Um, so got to go with it. You know, we got to pair up uh, Lawrence with someone. And we have Ridley. He's the uh, new number one guy there in Jacksonville. Uh, nicely rested after a year off. Um, had a, you know, pretty strong uh, preseason uh, Number one receiver, unquestioned. So, you know, um, what are the lowest salaries relative to his uh, expected opportunities? And he's been pretty consistent over the long run. So, um, you know, I think he could uh, try and make a statement here in week one. No, I really like uh, this pick, especially if this was a GPP lineup, because I think he has such a high ceiling. I think people forget. It's been a it's been a couple of years, but the last time we saw him, he was getting 90 receptions and almost 1,400 yards for a, a season. And my opinion is he gets a quarterback upgrade from what he had back then in Trevor Lawrence. Yep. And then we have Mr. Hill, uh, another overlap. Yeah. And rounding out the wide receiver core is Dotson. So McLaurin um, with turf toe, that's like one of the most nagging injuries. I don't know how serious it is, but, um, you know, the, there's not, a, it doesn't seem to be a lot of optimism uh, on his week one potential performance if he does play. 
Um, so Datsun, 3.7 times median value. So <clears throat> value is the fantasy points uh, divided by salary uh, over the last four games. And so this guy is, uh, you know, gives you your money's worth. And, uh, you know, you got Arizona and their, you know, coverage, you know, a half a standard deviation below the mean uh, for their coverage ability. Wow. Over here in uh, the Rams country, you know, I think that Higby is probably going to be uh, the main man for Stafford this weekend with Cup out. And so, uh, you know, he's he's been a pretty reliable target. And so at 4800 bucks, I'm going with Higby. Rob, I have to be honest, I don't like this pick. Uh -oh. I love, <laughs> I love this pick. I pulled the Simon Cowell on you. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, you said it. I think uh, there's a, a familiarity. I mean, if you with Cooper Cup out, you ask yourself, who the heck is Stafford going to throw to? And the guy he has, has the most familiarity is Tyler Higby. $4,800 is a great price uh to get him and you already referenced it i think this is going to be a very high scoring game i think this is a game that the rams are going to be behind and uh i think they'll rely on higby all right and we have uh, as our part of our team stack here uh deon jackson look indianapolis is at home they will not have jonathan taylor who's on the pup list they will not have zach moss who has a bad wrist uh, when that has been the case before, Deion Jackson gets the lion's share of the carries. I expect that to, to happen here. The only competition is fifth-round rookie Evan Hall, and he'll get a little action, but I think the majority of the work will be Jackson's. Yep, I agree. And rounding out our lineup, the commanders, you mentioned them before, seven-point favorites, um, You know, high projected value. Um, I don't think they give up a, a heck of a lot of points uh, at home to Arizona. So, I mean, the methodology is pretty simple. I try to keep it uh, simple, stupid, because, you know, I've learned that with all these fields, um, you know, you could really get into analysis paralysis. So what I've done for each position is um, use our, we have a tool called which stat matter. So I've gone back and I've kind of back tested which stats have the most correlation with fantasy points. <clears throat> and I've made those my kind of my main uh, fields to review. And that's how I do kind of the short list each week uh, to find, uh, you know, the players that are I'm most interested in. And then I use those other things. Um, you know, let's talk about an example, you know, quarterback here. You know, we got the main uh, most correlated stats here uh, among the stats that we have available. And then over on this side of status, I have a whole bunch of other uh, things which are less correlated with fantasy points but if you get a whole bunch of them pointing in the same direction uh, it's usually a pretty good signal um, so <clears throat> one example is um, adjusted net yards per attempt and so you know that on its own you know you would not weight high as a, a predictive metric but when combined with other stuff you know like their their rushing ability the position rank of their opponents uh, the pressure that they face and all that other stuff um, then once you have your, you know, your short list of players, and I usually start like maybe two, three, uh, four players, and then I look at the other intangibles, uh, then you can kind of filter the list a little easier. And so I've done that with all of the different um, positions. So try to do the same methodology. No, I really like that. So Rob, I really like the tools that you've showed us so far on your site. Is there anything else you think our viewers might enjoy? Just a quick tip. Yeah. Um, like if you're getting involved in DFS and you're trying to learn what matters when making uh, player selections, we have this section over here that has uh, basically how to choose each position. So what we've done is we've gone through and kind of summarized all of our learnings over the years and put it all on one page by position. So that's something that can help you. And you get the definitions of what various things mean. Um, so that's something that can help you if you're just getting into it. Um, you know, we even have your videos, Eric. Uh, so if we go here. Um, we have all the masterclass videos you've done. So if anyone hasn't seen those, there's one easy, simple place to look at them all. And uh, so, yeah, that's kind of an education center that's helpful for new uh, players. What I really like about teaming with DFS Hub is your guys' mission and our mission is very similar, which is we both want to help 
the average DFS player become more successful with the people who have a deeper understanding of all the strategy as well as all of the data and tools. Yeah, hey, listen, uh, we're uh, really proud to be uh, associated with you guys. I mean, it's all about uh, education and experience and uh, having access to the news and data. Fine, and but we will report to you guys uh, on the FFC channel next week, Who, uh, wh which lineup uh, totaled more. We hope that you have learned a lot from our two lineups. Pick the players, regardless of which lineup that resonated the best with you, to build your perfect cash RGBP lineup. Until next time, everybody, take care. We'll put up on the screen two very important videos we think you'll enjoy, including the top 10 value plays on both DraftKings and FanDuel for week one of the 2023 NFL DFS season.